Hey guys, it's me, Pretzel, Kelly. It's that time of the month. It's Pretzel Pick Time. So this month I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, it's actually going to be two parts. And the reason why it's going to be two parts is because uh, through some serendipity, a bunch of the things that I kind of watched or, you know, wanted to talk about this month kind of thematically tied together. Uh, so what we're going to do is today's video is going to be about crime and mystery. Uh, and then, and then at the end of the month, we're going to do another one that's more miscellaneous, uh, just music and things like that. But today is going to be thematically tied together through crime, mystery, uh, unsolved things. You get the idea. Uh, so we're not going to have any awkward title reveal this time. We're going to go into it. We're going to do it right. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about is a classic film. So this film, uh, if you guys don't know, sometimes when I don't know what to watch, uh, or if I'm trying to find new movies, what I'll do is I'll sometimes uh, kind of pick a uh, genre, a country, a director, an actor, or something like that, and just kind of delve into it. And one of the kind of eras of film that I never dove into before and only recently started to is Australian New Wave. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I don't blame you because it's kind of the only thing that most people have heard of that came out of Australian New Wave is Mad Max. Uh, but this film uh, came out of Australian New Wave and it's called A Picnic at Hanging Rock. <laughs> This film is directed by Peter Ware, who also did more popularly uh, Dead Poet Society, uh, Master and Commander, and The Truman Show. Uh, and what it is, is it is a story about a girl's uh, finishing school, or private school, in 1900 Australia. And uh, it's about this picnic outing that happens to a location called Hanging Rock. Uh, and when they return from the picnic three girls and one teacher have gone missing during the picnic um what's really interesting about this film is it's very dreamy mystic uh there's a just an overall sense of tragedy throughout it um and you just can pick up really really strong but not uh beating you over the head allegories about the colonization of Austri uh, australia um the puritan mark left by victorian ideals and just overall repressed sexuality um one thing that i do want to mention about this film before you go into it is the the mystery itself will be maybe unfulfilling uh, by the time that you reach the end of the film. But the whole point of the movie is not necessarily about finding a solution, uh, it, but about more about just what mystery and lack of closure means to people affected by it, as well as the uh, frustration and the uh, anger felt, uh, per perhaps even by you as the audience member. I know I felt that when I watched it was... Um, just kind of like you would get more and more information throughout the film uh, as you're watching it about what potentially happened. And instead of additional information making it feel like you're understanding it more, all it did was make you feel more frustrated because you get got less and less confident and less about what happened. But not only that, but you felt like the mystery was getting further and further away from you. Um, and th what's really interesting about it is just the effect that this mystery and this tragedy has on all these people, the confusion, the, the effect of like the unknowable on people. Um, it, it, 
I haven't seen a mystery film like this before. Something terrible has happened. Three of your young ladies and, uh, and Miss McCraw are missing on the rock. What happened? Well, now, Mrs. Appleyard, uh, that's just the trouble. Nobody knows what happened. So, the author of the novel that this is based on purposefully kept it ambiguous pretty much throughout most of her life uh, whether the story that the movie and the novel are based on is if it's based on a true story. Uh, and in fact, years and years and years after the book and the movie came out, uh, journalists and like armchair investigators poured through libraries and microfiche and all this other stuff trying to find evidence of girls that had gone missing uh, around that time to see if it was a legitimate mystery that maybe they could solve or that they could uh, investigate themselves. But the truth is, kind of like how Fargo says that this is based on a true story, Fargo is not based on any true story, and this is technically not, this isn't based on any true story either. It's completely fictional. But the thing that I picked up the most in this is if you're familiar with the work of someone like, um, if you're familiar with the work of the David Lynch, um, you can see a lot of this film, how it might have influenced him, um, especially with regard to Twin Peaks, um, because there's four people that go missing, but everyone obsesses over one of them only, really. And the way that the people obsess over this one girl that went missing reminds me a lot. Just throughout the film, I kept getting reminded of uh, the way people would obsess about Laura Palmer in Twin Peaks. Um, but I cannot emphasize enough, this film is not about solving the mystery. It's, a, it's about what mystery and lack of knowledge and what the, and about just like how like how insignificant our ability to comprehend things can make us feel not just as characters in the uh film or you know just like how it's affecting them but also as an audience member when you watch this you'll catch yourself trying to figure it out and piece it together but i want you to pay attention to how frustrated you get while you're trying to figure out what's going on and while you're trying to understand what's happening because i think that that's what this film does really really well is it makes you as an audience member feel in a way kind of what the characters do even though you as an audience member have more knowledge than they do and knows lots of things other people don't know we shall only be gone a little while secrets she knew she wouldn't come back miranda miranda <laughs> What is the secret of Hanging Rock? And who will it claim next? Kelly! Next thing I'm going to talk about is something I haven't really talked about before, which is a uh, news article that I read. This is a long form news article called Angels and Demons. And it is a Pulitzer Prize winning article by Thomas French. Uh, and it's about the murders of Joe, Michelle, and Christy Rogers in Tampa, Florida. Um, as well as uh, it's about the capture of their murderer, uh, Oba Chandler. And what this article really does well is it creates really in-depth and meaningful portraits of the victims, the uh, family members and friends of the victims, uh, people in the police department involved in the investigation, and uh, eyewitnesses and uh, people that 
like submitted tips and stuff that eventually led to the capture of Oba Chandler. And what it does really well as well is it contextualizes the crime across all like the years and years and years from the point of the murder until the eventual uh, arrest of Oba Chandler, as well as the actual court, like uh, the trial of him. It tracks the lives of everyone that was affected by it, and it does so in a very, it does so in a way that doesn't feel exploitative. It doesn't feel melodramatic. It's it, it's from a journalist perspective. It's very fact driven, uh, very observational. But more than any other like article or anything that I've read about true crime, it does so in a way that it doesn't feel detached. It's you, more than anything. This one has it like kept me engaged throughout the like from the very first paragraph to the very end. I could not stop reading it. Um, and I'll be the first to admit, I'm terrible at reviewing anything pretty much other than film and games. Um, but I guess the highest praise I can give this is generally when I am ready to go to bed, I read because within two or three pages of reading, I'm asleep. So I don't read too much because I just fall asleep if I read. Um, but I could not stop reading this and I stayed up late to finish reading it. Um, I, like, I just couldn't stop. It, I was hooked from the very beginning and French's writing style is, it, it's, it's captivating. And the way that he's able to create these, uh, the way that he's made really able to make you empathize with the people involved in the case across, you know, all spectrums of involvement is is really really fascinating really good so if you're a fan of true crime and it's relatively short i mean it's fifty thousand words but um i highly recommend it you can read it online for free um at longform.com uh and highly recommend it really really good and today, the devil loses. This woman claims to be the daughter of a former Tampa aluminum contractor convicted of murdering an Ohio woman and her two teenage daughters, a man who may have been the only person to claim he was not guilty of the crime. All right, next thing I'm going to talk about, uh, keeping in line with true crime, is a podcast that I listen to. This podcast is called Down the Hill, and what it is, is it's a limited run podcast put out by HLN, uh, which is a American uh, news channel, and, but what it is, is it's about a, uh, it's about the mysterious death of two young girls in Delphi, Indiana. Two eighth grade girls killed while hiking two years ago. Did one of them record the killer? before she died. Police just today releasing new video from one of the girl's phones and a new sketch tonight, an audio of a suspect. So this podcast covers pretty much everything. It covers the events that, like, everything that led up to the murder, like what we know happened, uh, the initial police response, and uh, the long-term police procedures that followed, and uh just the effects that it had on the town and the people involved as well as the police members that handled the case um the podcast will make you sad and it'll make you frustrated absolutely frustrated um the thing that like the podcast just kind of has you asking throughout the entire case is how can a crime that includes video evidence of a suspect filmed by one of the victims still remain unsolved and with no arrests at all. Tonight, Indiana investigators releasing this new video that they believe shows the man who killed a 13-year-old Abby Williams and her friend, 14-year-old Libby German. Watch the mannerisms as he walks. Do you recognize the mannerisms as being someone that you might know? That video captured by Libby shortly before the murders while the girls were hiking and Snapchatting by this bridge in Delphi, Indiana. Police today also unveiling a new, younger looking sketch of the suspect between 18 and 40. Investigators believe he has ties to the area. An emotional state police superintendent today addressing the killer. Directly to the killer, 
who may be in this room. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. We know that this is about power to you, and you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. So the quality of this is not exactly like something like cereal or anything like that. Like cereal is probably the top, uh, the top tier when it comes to that kind of the benchmark. Um, but it does include interviews with the victim's family members, uh, former members of the investigation team, people involved just in the town in general, uh, and outside perspective. Um, it's, it's an unsolved mystery that to this day fascinates me. And every now and then I will check to see if there's any, um, any, like, uh, any progress that's been made in the case. Uh, it, it's just one of those ones that it probably more than any other case I can think of is super frustrating from an outsider perspective because it feels like there's there's so much information that's being withheld from by the police and whether they have good reason to or not, whether you believe they actually have more evidence than they actually do, etc. Those are questions that aren't really answered, but that's those are questions you might have when you listen to it. Um, and like I said, just how can it feel like we have so much information, more information than we have for other cases, um, like the one that I mentioned uh, in Tampa, and yet there, there's still no resolution yet, and it feels like we're no closer to figuring out what happened. Um, I, it's a great podcast. It's really well done. And if you're a fan of true crime, it's really, really good. I definitely recommend it. Investigators also releasing more of that chilling recording from Libby's phone, believed to be the killer's voice. All right. To end things, I'm going to talk about a contemporary film. And not only is this a great film, it is one of my favorite films ever, and it is called A Separation. This film is about a divorcing Iranian couple uh, living kind of in the middle upper class of, I believe, Tehran. And they, uh, after they begin their separation proceedings, they uh, hire a woman from the poorer outskirts of Tehran to take care of the uh, husband's elderly father who's suffering from Alzheimer's. And uh, the movie's not only about the fallout from the divorce on the couple and the family and the people involved, in their lives but also it turns into a criminal suspense movie uh and i don't want to talk about too much the details involved because i think it's best to experience it with not too much detail um much like how i did um but it's made by oscar farhadi who five years later after winning uh, best foreign film for this film would win it again for the salesman, which is about some, uh, an Iranian man who is acting in death of a salesman. Um, this movie is not, this movie is one of my favorites because not only does it comment, it comments on so many different things and it does so in a very nuanced way. Uh, it has commentary about divorce and its effect on people. It has commentary on class divides. Uh, it has, um, but more than anything, it's, it's kind of an experience in like what the malleability of truth is like. And so in this film, you will not know the truth until the very end. Until the very end. And throughout the film, you will think you know what happened. And the film will surprise you. It'll prove you wrong. Even after multiple watches where I kind of know what, even though like I know what the ending is and I'm watching throughout the film, I still to this day catch myself thinking that I understand what happened and I'll be proven wrong um, by one of the characters making a comment or saying something. It, it's just very interesting because there's so much that's happening. Like I said, it's not only about 
this criminal investigation that's happening, but it's also about the divorce, right? And as a viewer, we kind of become complicit because we neglect, as a viewer, we're so focused on this crime drama that's happening that we're neglecting the effect of the divorce and the effect of the separation of this couple on people involved in the case. Or not the case, but involved in the divorce itself, the family members and stuff. And, and we kind of end up as viewers forgetting just like, we, we get wrapped up so much in the drama and the potential melodrama that we as viewers neglect a lot of what's happening in the film. And it's just such a powerful movie. It It's Hitchcockian in some ways without some of uh, the kind of over-the-topness because even Hitchcock could be melodramatic and uh, and things like that. This is, it's raw. It's very raw. Um, divorce is something that is not, it's becoming more popular in Iran since the 70s and especially over the past couple decades. It used to be restricted only to like the major cities like Tehran, but now it's kind of going outside of the major cities. So divorce is still of a sort of a taboo-ish topic. And so the fact that it's a film about that where neither the husband or the wife that's separating is really a bad person and they get wrapped up in this situation and pull people into it, it it's just really, really good. Really good. And unlike Picnic at Hanging Rock, you'll get a conclusion. But... The conclusion in this will feel satisfying in the sense that the crime will be solved, but I hope that you take away, when you watch this, by the end of it, much like I said in Picnic at Hanging Rock to pay attention to how you're feeling and what you're paying attention to, I want you to do the same thing in this if you watch it, which is to pay attention to what you're giving pro mental priority to as far as uh, what are you most concerned about? Are you concerned about the criminal proceedings, the effect the divorce is having on all these different people, how these people are interacting? Who's the, who is the victim in this? Who are the victims in this? And why are they the victims? And what are they the victims of? Um, it, it's just emotionally one of the best movies I have ever seen. And I would definitely say this is probably in my top five movies of all time. <laughs> There you go. Uh, I, that's all my crime mystery stuff. Like I said, I'll put out another video at the end of the month with more just kind of miscellaneous things. Probably more movies, because that's what I know and talk about more than anything probably is movies. But I'll probably talk about a band and maybe some other things. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. And... Fuck, I didn't come up with an ending.